Hello dudes and dudettes. In today's episode we will build a Anycubic Costal that my friend Gerdy, my uh, guest star for today, bought Hello. last week. Hello dudes and dudettes. In today's episode we will build a Anycubic Costal that my friend Gerdy, my uh, guest star for today, bought Hello. last week. And um, yeah, he already started to assemble the frame a little bit. Looks like that. And we also have a whole another box of other parts that we will try to assemble in today's episode. Check this out. Bang. Um, yes, in the next few hours we will assemble this printer until it prints and you can be our guest and watch the time lapse and any episodes that pose some, some difficulties or anything will slow it down and talk a little bit about it. Stay tuned. As you've already noticed by now, we are not in the usual lab stream lab, but we are in my second home, the Robocar lab of the University of Frankfurt. Uh, we need a little bit more space, so we went here. In the back you can see the football training field for our little now robots that we usually program in here. And we also have a bunch of 3D printers standing around. Yeah, ideal conditions to build up this castle. Welcome back dudes and dudettes, we finished, I think so, we finished building up uh, this monster and here are the remarks that we noticed during the, the building in, in case you're watching this video and want to build it yourself. So first off is uh, the end stops, <laughs> be very careful to mount them in the right way. If you look at the, if you look at the rail, end stops lower point should point to the right, should be lower on the yep. right. Because that's exactly where these screws on the on the on the bearings will, will slide up and down and, and meet the end stop. The second thing um, you have to at at some point you have to put the cables through these uh, extruded aluminium pipes and get them down on the other side. We noticed after the fact that there was indeed um, this little how do you what's the name for this wire this little yes wire thing whatever. And um, yes, I strongly recommend that you just use this to pull the cable through. So you slide this in from the bottom, hook it to the cable and then just pull it through. Because we didn't realize that we have such a thing and uh, try to put the cables all by themselves down there and they would get stuck after 20-30 centimeters. So we had a hard time getting them through. Um, the cables from the power supply to the main board, you need to crimp them a bit in order for them to fit into the terminals because they, are, they were too thick on, on the printer we got. The, the heat bed has uh, three holes, but there are no screws and uh, no nuts in the package. 
But if you want to put the build circles on it, you can you can put screws in there anyway. So for now we are just uh, putting this in the mounts that are already screwed in there, and it seems to hold them hold the build plate quite well. All right, and. Uh, yeah, this bed leveling thing has a strong magnet and it seems like you can temporarily mount it here in order to level the bed and then you have to take it off if you want to print because it sits in front of the nozzle. This is a strange design idea, but yeah, what do I know? Let's get this thing powered up and try to level it. <laughs> okay, now we'll try to perform the initial auto bed leveling feature and uh, so you can see anything I will just be the backdrop for now and let my lovely assistant take over. So right now I'm navigating here to auto leveling bed and then Next step is the prepare leveling uh, menu point. And here we are gonna choose the begin leveling option. So, fossil. What the f? <laughs> <laughs> Sums it up pretty nicely. Uh, what the f? Alright, now that we crashed the Z-axis uh, quite a bit when trying to auto-level, we realized that the wiring diagram in this funny little booklet, book, uh, booklet is wrong when it comes to the end stops. In this picture that I'll show you here, uh, you can see that instead of wiring the X and Y end stops to X- minus and Y- minus on the board, you have to wire them just like the Z end stop to X plus and Y plus. And after that the procedure of auto leveling works as described in this book. Now we load some filament in this beast and see if we can print something. We unclip this, we unclip that. Yeah, now it's a philosophical discussion, same as with toilet paper rolls. Do I unroll in the back or in the front? I think this way should be fine. Straighten it out, cut off a little. And then we put yeah. it in here. Do it like a pro. Clamp these two to make a little space and try to push, wiggle it through. Push, push, push. push. Yeah, it's easier said than done. I hate this. Let's just unscrew that. I'm just trying because you're too weak. <laughs> now you're cheating. Completely. Such a pain in the ass. Yes, I'm cheating. <laughs> a real man would have done it the proper way uh. by pushing. <laughs> <laughs> by pushing like hell. Of course. And we put it back in there, and now we can slide it all the way through. Looks good. 
All right, so doesn't go any further. We've reached the heating block. Now we'll heat up everything and see if we can extrude properly. But before that, we need to. But before that, we of course uh, just remove the leveling probe because now we've done that and we're fine. So we are happy. Yippee! And we are good to go. Welcome back. Um, yeah, we are done printing. We have the first print on this new castle. Let's try to. You have a shiver somewhere. Oh wow, this is. Welcome back, dudes and dudettes. Um, we finished our very first print with the with the printer after the little hassle we had. Um, yeah, the Z leveling, the auto leveling doesn't seem to work fully because the first layer was too near to the bed, and we had a little problem getting it off the print bed. But with a little bit of force, <laughs> we managed to get it off in the end. Overall, <laughs> overall, it looks awesome. It looks very well. The only thing we have is the first layer, so we'll probably just uh, need to put in a little additional set offset and then we should be fine. The print speed was amazing, I must say. Um, we took the standard values for acceleration and print speed from this little manual and um, we've been using Repetier Host over USB connection. And yeah, I'm, 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 really, I'm really impressed with the results. We have a little bit of ghosting in the Y direction. But other than that, I think this is an amazing printer. All right, so we hope you enjoyed today's episode, uh, watching us printing up this Anycubic Delta Costle printer and pulling out the first calibration cube. And we hope that the tips we gave you come in handy, maybe for some of you. And other than that, have a nice day. Bye-bye. See ya.